In this video, I'll be covering the jQuery animation method. The animation method allows us to animate CSS properties that use numeric values. For example, we might use it to change the font size of text. We can also animate more than one CSS property at a time. Let's start by looking at the HTML document that we'll be using. Here you can see that we have an h1, an h2, and an h3 heading tag. And up here in the head section, we have a style that specifies the background color of the h2 element. We are going to be animating the h2 element, so setting the background color of this element will help us to see what's happening. Here's the JavaScript code that we're going to be using. As you can see, we're using a click event for the h1 heading. So the code that we put here will be run whenever the user clicks on the h1 heading tag. So to use the jQuery animation method, we need to start by specifying a selector. And so as usual, we use the dollar sign followed by a pair of parentheses. And we're going to be animating the h2 element. So we enclose h2 in quotation marks. And then type dot animate and then follow this with a pair of parentheses, and then end the statement with a semicolon. And now in the parentheses, put a pair of curly brackets, and then follow that with a comma, a space, and then we type a number that will specify how long the animation will last. And this number is in milliseconds, and one millisecond is one thousandth of a second, so by specifying one thousand, this animation will last for one second. The CSS properties that we're going to be animating go between these curly brackets. So I'm going to put my cursor between the brackets and press enter a couple of times to give myself some space to work. Now the CSS properties that can be animated use numeric values. For example, font size uses a numeric value, so it can be animated. So to specify the property that will be animated, we can start by typing the property name in between a pair of quotation marks. So I'll type font size, and then we need to follow this with a colon, and the colon goes on the outside of the quotation marks, and then I'll type a space, and then I'll put the value inside of another pair of quotation marks. And for the font size, I'm going to use a value of 3EM. And we can use the normal units that CSS allows, for instance, I could have used px for pixels, but in this case, I'm just going to use em. So let's look at this in the browser now. And here we have our three heading tags. And so now I'll click on the heading one tag. And we can see that when I did this, the heading two font size increased to the value that we specified. We can also animate multiple properties all at the same time. So to do this, come over here and right after this value that we specified, put a comma. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and add a new line to make this easier to read. And then I'll just specify another CSS property in quotation marks. And I'll specify width. Then I follow this with a colon. And then I'll put the value for this one in quotation marks. And I'll just use 50%. And so let's try this out. So now when I click on the h1 heading, we should see the font size of the h2 heading grow, and also the width of the h2 heading should change to 50%. And so I'll go ahead and click this h1 heading now. So just like we expected, the font size grew, and the width of the heading changed. So now let's add a third CSS property. So just like before, at the end of this value, I need to add a comma, and then I'll use a new line, and this time, in quotation marks, I'll use the property left. Then I follow this with a colon. I'll use a value of 100 pixels. And you may recall from CSS that for the left property to have an effect, the element that it's used on needs to have a position property value of either relative, absolute, or fixed. So if we jump over to our HTML code for a second, You'll see that up here in the head section that I have a style set for the h2 element, and this style sets the position to relative. And again, the position needs to be set to either relative, absolute, or fixed 
in order for the left property to have an effect. So let's go back over to the JavaScript code and let's save this and look at it in the browser. So now when I click on the H1 heading, the font size, width, and left property should all change. Now jQuery also lets us specify values that are called relative values. So I'll show you how that works. So if we want this left property to use a relative value, we can do that by adding a plus sign and an equal sign right before our value. And what this is saying is that every time that this click event happens, we want the left property to be incremented by 100 pixels. So let's take a look at this. So I'll click on the heading tag, and we'll see that the left property did increment 100 pixels, so we're now at 100 pixels from the left. But if I click it again, it'll also increment another 100 pixels. And so every time I click this, it'll move another 100 pixels. And when you're using relative values, you can also use a minus sign instead of a plus sign. And if I were to do this, then the left value would decrease by 100 pixels every time that I clicked. I'm going to go ahead and change this back to a plus sign. Now jQuery also allows you to use show, hide, and toggle as the CSS value. So for example, I can come up here to font size, and for the value, I could set this to hide. And now for this animation, the font size will be hidden as soon as I click on the H1 heading. So let's take a look at that. So I'll click on the H1 heading now, and you can see that the font size decreased until it was hidden. And again, you can use hide, show, or toggle. So let's try an example using toggle. And we'll try this out now. And toggle will allow us to alternate between hide and show every time that we click on the H1 tag. And since the H2 heading tag starts off as visible, when I click this, it should hide it. And then if I click it again, it should show it. And you'll also notice that we're still incrementing the left property. So every time that we click this, the left property increases by 100 pixels. So I'll click it again, and then again. So now, if we wanted another animation to occur, but we didn't want it to happen until this animation is complete, we can accomplish that by using a callback function. And so I'll show you how to do that. So come over here to the number that specifies the duration of this animation, and then type a comma, and then type the word function. And then follow that by a pair of parentheses, and then a space, and then follow that by a pair of curly brackets. And inside the curly brackets is where we put our code that will be run as soon as this animation is finished running. So I'm going to put my cursor between these curly brackets and hit enter a couple times to give myself space to work. And then I'm going to add an effect that will hide the H3 tag. So I need to type a dollar sign followed by a pair of parentheses. And then in quotation marks, I'll type H3 so I can specify the H3 tag. And then I'll type dot fade out. And then I'll type a pair of parentheses followed by a semicolon to end this statement. And then in the parentheses, I'll type in 1000 so that the duration of this effect will be one second. And now when I click on the H1 element, the font size, width, and the left properties of the H2 element should change. And then when they've completed changing, then the H3 element should fade out. So let's try that. So I'll click on the H1 element. So the H2 element fades away, and then the H3 element faded away. So let's look at that one more time. So I'll click on the H1 element, and as soon as the H2 element finishes fading, then the H3 element starts its fading. So this is a method that you can use to combine multiple animations. Well, that concludes this video. For more information on the jQuery animation method, visit jQuery.com, and you can find the sample code used in this video at littlewebhut.com. Thanks for watching, 
and please subscribe and leave a comment.